Ayan Hirsiali, for those people who are not familiar, has had an extraordinary life story. She was born and raised in Somalia, uh, at which point she was an enthusiastic member of the Muslim Brotherhood. She then escaped and became a refugee into the Netherlands, where she rose to become a top-ranking politician and a best-selling author. Her book, Infidel, has sold many, many millions of copies over the decades. And during that time and in the years since, she became synonymous with the new atheism movement. She renounced her Islamic uh, past. And if you actually look up new atheism, there are the four horsemen, as they are known, and then straight after that is Ayan Hirsi Ali. So she has been absolutely integral to that movement. Last autumn, some months ago, on Unheard, in fact, she announced that she had become a Christian. And the world reacted. It was covered in all of the newspapers. And it was seen, rightly, as an incredibly significant story in the world of ideas. Richard Dawkins, who needs no further introduction, but I must, is perhaps the most famous atheist in the world. Uh, he, his books, The God Delusion, The Selfish Gene, are some of the biggest selling nonfiction books of all time. He has been active making the argument for the atheistic cause for decades. And when his close friend and fellow new atheist announced that she had become a Christian, he wrote an open letter to her saying, and I quote, seriously, I am? You, a Christian, you are no more a Christian than I am. We're bringing them together for the first time to have that out and have that conversation. So please, to begin with, welcome to the stage, Richard Dawkins. Just tell us the story, how such a famous atheist, someone who had rejected religion, came to call herself a Christian. Oh. <laughs> um, so I... Um, want to say that I didn't, like many people who um, come to faith, I didn't see big banging lights and I didn't have um, any of those spectacular experiences that some people share. I wish I did, but I didn't. Um, I had a, a personal crisis. Um, I lived for about a decade with intense depression and anxiety, self-loathing. Um, I hit rock bottom. I went to a place where I actually didn't want to live anymore, but wasn't brave enough to take my own life. And so I was self-medicating. I had, over a long period of time, seen um, psychiatrists, other doctors, I was trying to understand my condition and trying to treat it with the help of pure evidence-based science. And in January, February of um, last year, I saw one therapist who said, perhaps it's something else that you have, and she described it as spiritual bankruptcy. And that resonated with me, and having reached a place where I had absolutely nothing to lose, um, I prayed, and I prayed desperately. And for me, that was a turning point. And what happened after that is a miracle in its own right. Um, I feel connected to something higher and greater than myself. I feel... Uh, I, uh, my zest for life is back. Um, and it, it, that... <laughs> and that experience um, has filled me with humility, I have to say. It, uh, and, and it is something that's very subjective. It's extremely difficult to explain. I'm trying to work, you know, 
get into the details, the granular details of how I got there in a book, but that is a short, um, that's, you know, the shortest story mm. that I can tell. <laughs> Let's go to, to Richard Dawkins' reaction, yeah. because well, you... I, um, that, that, that's a, a moving personal story, but to call yourself a Christian is a bit different. I mean, a Christian has to believe in something. And, uh, I mean, any... Well, you go to church now, um, and you listen to the vicar, and... Do you kind of notice what a lot of nonsense he talks? <laughs> I mean, do, do you really take it seriously that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus was born of a virgin, and that's part of Christianity? You... So, I think because you, and I know you very well, we've been friends um, for a long time, and in fact, in some ways, I think of you as a mentor. Um, I would say you are coming at this from a place um, of there is nothing. And what has happened to me is I think I have accepted there is something. And when you accept that there is something, and there is a powerful um, entity, for me, the, the God that, that turned me around, I think what the vicar is saying no longer sounds nonsensical. It makes a great deal of sense. And not only does it make a great deal of sense, it's also layered with the wisdom of millennia. And so, like you, I did mock uh, faith in general, and probably Christianity in particular, but I don't do that anymore. And, and again, that is where the humility comes into it, is it doesn't seem, in 2024, after. I went through that experience. Um, I, it doesn't seem nonsensical to me, and it doesn't, I, I, I don't mock it. I think I've, been, I've come down to my knees to say, perhaps those people who've always had faith have something that we who lost faith um, don't have. Um, and, and, and people who have faith also, like the woman who told me, well, you, you've reached, you, you've tried everything and you've lost hope, you've lost faith. Um, try it, uh, pray. Um, I think just in, in that one word, there is so much wisdom and, and um, that it's, I, 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 I am stuttering and I'm staggering to say, I, I'm just trying to say, no, it's not stupid. Okay. It's, in fact, how, how, it's clever well, and it's wise. So you believe in some kind of higher power, which is comforting you, um, and you react, you're obviously you're re reacting from an Islamic past, and, and um, I know that from what you've written, that part of what you feel is uh, that Christianity is a bulwark against Islam, mm -hmm. which is a quite separate thing from what you've been now saying, but, uh, but you, you stand by that. I mean, you, you, that's part of what, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I accept that, and I, I support that. Um, that's why I've called you a political Christian. But from what you've just said, it sounds as though you're more than just a political Christian. I mean, it sounds as though you actually believe it. Mm. Um, so, so what is your response to those specific questions of Richard? When the vicar is saying that Jesus is the son of God literally, not figuratively. Yeah. How do you square that with your highly trained rational mind? Well, it is, again, different planes of perception. So I, I choose to accept Jesus Christ, the, the teachings of Jesus Christ, the story of Jesus Christ. I choose to accept that. So on the personal level, the rewards I get, very subjective again, but mine and through choice which is separate from where I think that, aside from my personal experience, um, the history of Western civilization is mainly Christian, and that the external forces, for instance, the spread of Islam non-violently or violently, uh, and the challenge of Islam and the message of Islam to Western civilization 
can be countered and should be countered with the message of Western civilization, which mm. is essentially Christian. And in that sense, I think there are more people who agree with me, but that is on the societal level. And then on the civilizational level, I think that every moral, you, you've used yourself, uh, Richard, the um, phrase lately that there is moral Christianity and there is cultural Christianity. And when moral and cultural Christianity collides with moral and cultural Islam or moral and cultural Confucianism or cultural authoritarianism, um, hmm. I think then perhaps we're on the same page about that might be a way of countering it. Yes. But on the personal level, yes, I choose to believe in God. And I think there we might say, let's agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't hear that. She's saying, let's agree to disagree on the, okay. on the details. I mean, uh, if, if I could It's I more just... than just details. I, I, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I wanted to say two, two different things. Uh, let's take the moral thing first. Islam is a nasty religion. I, I think we agree about, about that. But Christianity is not all that nice either. And when you think about Christianity, Christianity is obsessed with sin. St. Augustine said that we, are all, we all inherit the sin of Adam. Well, of course, he didn't exist, but so we inherit original sin. Hmm. Original sin came down in the semen. Jesus was not conceived with semen, that's why he's clear of sin. His mother Mary had to be clear of sin as well, so she had to have an immaculate conception. This is all obvious nonsense. This is all theological bullshit. And, <laughs> the idea that humanity is born in sin and has to be cured of sin by Jesus being crucified, Jesus being punished for all our sins. And that is a morally very unpleasant idea. I'm sure you must agree about that. I find that Christianity is actually obsessed with love and that the figure, the teachings of... <laughs> the teaching of Christ as I see it, and again, I'm a brand new Christian, but what I'm finding out, which is the opposite of growing up as a Muslim, the message of Islam, but the message of Christianity I get is that um, it, it's a message of love, it's a message of redemption, and it's a story of renewal and rebirth. And so Jesus dying uh, and rising again, for me, symbolizes that story. And in a small way, I felt like I had died and I was reborn. And that story of redemption and uh, rebirth, uh, I think, makes Christianity actually a very, very powerful story for the human condition and human existence and the pain of suffering, but also our internal, the recognition of uh, what you call sin, but perhaps the character defects, that both good and evil are there, but that both good and evil are in us. I think those teachings in Christianity are far, far more powerful and have led to, I, I think, the flourishing of Western civilization compared to, say, growing up as a Muslim when I was taught that really the only way for you to be faithful is to fear, naked fear, and to have these sets of obligations which you basically obey. Um, and that was very much about power, about um, it was centered around hellfire and, mm. and all of these um, other things. And so Christianity, as I experienced, I'll give you an example. When I was an atheist and I was going all over uh, both the United States and all over Europe, mocking Christians, making fun of them, making fun of faith, as you're doing now, dear Richard. <laughs> I was walking with six to seven men at any given time, protecting me armed, 
from uh, things that I said that were offensive to Muslims, or Muslims thought were offensive to them. Christians were writing me letters saying, you know, we're going to pray for you, you're misguided. And I think that alone defines for me the distinction between Christianity in general, main, mainstream Christianity, and mainstream Islam. Well, I must say, I've never met a vicar that I didn't like. I mean, they're always very, very nice people. <laughs> um, yeah. But, but nevertheless, the stuff they believe is obvious nonsense. And, and um, you, you have to take the whole package because, I mean, you talked about Jesus rising from the dead. You don't believe Jesus rose from the dead, surely. Um, I choose to believe that Jesus rose from the dead. You choose to is, believe it. Yes, and that is a matter of choice. And it's a matter, it's, it, 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 I think we, it has to go back to, is there something or is there nothing? And I think you start with, there is nothing. And yes, for years I agreed with you, there's nothing. But if you come round to the idea that there might be something much more powerful than we are, something that caused everything else, then something like Jesus rising out of the dead or these other miracles, Jesus being born out of a virgin, for that higher power is not a big deal. En este video, Ayan Hirsi Ali comparte su extraordinaria historia de vida y su sorprendente conversión del ateísmo al cristianismo, mientras Richard Dawkins reacciona. Este segmento destaca los desafíos personales de Ayan y su búsqueda de significado y conexión espiritual. 